So another important thing that you'll probably need to do for your WatchKit app, which of course runs on an extension, is share data between it and your regular iOS app. The easiest way to, well, the only way to do this is through a system that Apple has introduced in iOS 8 called App Groups. In this tutorial, I'm gonna talk about how to set up App Groups and then how to use the NS user defaults, which iOS automatically syncs with App Groups to share a piece of information between an iOS app and your WatchKit extension. This can be used for any other type of extension, like a Tay View extension or a photo edit extension, share extension. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to do it in a WatchKit app. Just remember, this can be used anywhere else as well. So the first thing we need to do is set up our app group. So in the project section in my iOS app uh, target, we go into capabilities and we go down to app groups. As you can see, just need to turn on this entitlement. Once this is turned on, this will load for a second and you do need an iOS developer license for this. It gives you the option to select one of the app groups you already have. As you can see, I already have an app group for WatchKit tutorial. If you don't already have an app group, you can click a new one and give an app group with a name. You're meant to use a domain name and then uh, app name. I haven't done that in this case because I'm not that professional, but I'm just going to select the app group for this case. Loads for a second and then you're done. If you come up with errors at this point, you can uh, go back to the general page and there'll be a fix errors button here or fix issues button here. You need to just click that and that should fix any errors you had. I had that on the first time through because I've done this twice because my microphone didn't work. Um, you need to change over to the WatchKit extension target now and do the same thing again. So turn on your entitlements and add this to the WatchKit extension app group. So we have a app group shared between our two, uh, our app and our extension now. We need to first store information in a, NNS, a shared NS user default. So let's go to our iOS app and build a really simple little interface. So uh, text field, we're going to just store a text, piece of text. So let's put our text field in there and let's put a button. Open up. Assistant editor, close that. So bring our text field, make our text field available. And make a function for our button. So if you haven't used NSE as defaults before, I'm probably gonna do another tutorial explaining how to use them properly but I'm just going to skim over it in this case. Um, there's plenty of other information if I haven't done that tutorial yet on how to use NSD user default. They're a pretty standard thing. So let's first create our shared user default. So let shared and if you've used NSD user defaults before you know of, um, I can't remember what it's called but you have to declare this first, which is what I'm doing. And when you open that bracket, it comes up with the option sweet name, sweet. Yes, I know it's not sweet, sweet. It's... Anyways, in here, you want to put the name of your uh, app group, which is the container where your information is stored, that's shared. So, So this is our access point for that shared container. So let's, when this function runs, we're gonna to wanna to put a uh, text. So shared dot uh, set object for key. We're gonna set our object as the text field uh, text. And we want our key to be uh, shared because we're sharing it. And finally, as you normally would with NS user default, you just want to synchronize that. So that's saving that in that shared container. And now we're going to access it from our WatchKit app. So over in our WatchKit app, we go into our interface builder, we close that, and I'm going to put in a button and a text field. So there's a button, that's convenient, and a label. So 
going to pull that text out. I'm going to put it in the text field. When we press this button, um, and uh, for the text field. Oh no, it's not a text field. So we're going to copy over. So again, we need to access that NS user default. So equals NS user defaults. And again, the same sweet name. Dot uh, kit tutorial. And if you've used NS user, de uh, user defaults before, you'd know you yeah, you'd use object for key. So we're going to go, I'm going to set um, equals, this is probably uh, more than necessary, share defaults dot object for key. And I think we called it shared. Now we're just going to set our text as Shared text and we'll just add a as string. That's all happy. Now we can test run our app. So our iOS app comes up. Wait, ding, wait, ding, wait. That's right. Something and button. So that button saves it in our shared container. Run our Watch Kit app and our app starts up. We press our button. There it loads our text, something which is from that shared container. So hopefully that shows you an example of how to use uh, the shared containers and app groups with uh, NS user defaults. You can also use these with, actually you can use this with practically anything you can save onto an iOS device. You just have to save it into that container and most, there's a reasonable amount of information out there on how to do that.